I have been thinking for a very long time, how do we use tokens to create engagement? Because I deeply believe that unless we can create more engagement, more collaboration, we are not going to move beyond the place that we're in now, which is where big social networks actually own our content. And I think that tokens are actually going to be the way that we as individuals control our content. Now, engagement is about identity, content and connections. And so this panel is going to talk about identity, content and connections. And we, we had a little call a few days ago and there seems to be a difference of opinion about how identity should manifest itself in this space. Um, these are some of the ways that tokens create engagement. Um, for a grocery store, it might mean dropping a token about avocados that are about to go off into the wallet of the shoppers. That creates engagement. Um, if you, we, we have Nolan. Where's Nolan? Nolan will be talking about how we create engagement for books. And we did a very interesting project uh, earlier, uh, about middle of last year, where we created a token for wedding vows. That was truly engagement between a husband and a wife. And of course, engagement is a call to action. Download, play, redeem. You all can see redeem in your swag bag. Um, you also all now have your cred domains and you've all been using ask a question. Ask a question is engaging through your domain token and my domain token. Um, and you've also seen, if you've looked at newsfeed, that's how I've been giving my panelists the questions that have come from the audience. So, um, the last token is something we call a relationship token, where if you take one token and you put it in your wallet with another token, that makes something different. So in this case, we're saying take soda token, popcorn toga token, and you actually get a cinema combo token with a movie ticket. Because the wallet knows what other tokens are in it. Cool. Um, Chris, your slide's up. Would you like to tell the guys a little bit about what you're doing? And then we'll have our debate. Hello. Oh, hey, my name is Chris. I am the CMO at Fabrics, and we're working on two very interesting projects. Uh, one of them is Stratosphere, the other is Zero Collateral. Uh, Stratosphere is more of an infrastructure project uh, dealing with basically supercharging layer ones. Uh, Zero Collateral is more of a DeFi based project, uh, essentially, under collateralized loans on, D on DeFi. So, just very quickly. Thank you. I think I've got... Yeah, there's a quick summary. <laughs> <laughs> and Topper. Hi, I'm a Topper, and uh, my team and I... Keep it closer, huh? <laughs> <laughs> my uh, team and I are building Tupelo, which is a smart layer one platform, which is built entirely for and around NFTs. David. Hi, I'm David, um, CEO and co-founder of uh, arts platform called Known Origin, built on the Ethereum blockchain. Um, we do small edition runs of NFTs. Um, we've brought quite a few new artists to the scene. Uh, started in 2018. Excellent. So, <clears throat> the thing that's on my mind is how do we create engagement? amongst a community that really likes to be anonymous. So the blockchain community has wanted to be anonymous for a very long time and your wallet doesn't tell people who you are. Um, so my question is, how do we possibly create engagement? In fact, uh, is it Gary? I just bumped into someone, one of, one of you guys who had bought an Ethereum ticket and he said to me, Jody, I didn't get my swag bag. I said, Gary, how do we engage with you if you buy an Ethereum ticket, and he bought an Ethereum ticket, how do we engage with you if we don't know who you are? So that's an issue in this community. Um, who thinks that anonymous is important and who thinks that verified is important? 
So <clears throat> I think actually there's room for both. Um, and on our call, um, I was saying that um, I think that as a community, we really need to divorce physical identity from digital identity and let digital identities have a life of their own, their own credit history, their own social engagement, um, and pay their own taxes. Um, but when we start to have to tie those digital identities back into the physical identities, I think that's when the hard problem starts um, and the difficulties of both um, enforcement um, and, uh, and engagement. Chris? Yeah, I think, uh, so for us kind of currently being based in DeFi, I think the anonymous profile is very valuable, but each side has its pros and cons. And I think being on the anonymous side, you, there's kind of this gray line in the middle where you're anonymous, but to get the best of that uh, anonymity, you kind of have to touch the gray line of having some sort of uh, compliance or KYC. So, so you are in favor of it, anonymous engagement? Or how, how do you engage with someone who's anonymous? I, I, I'm, I'm in favor of it, but um, I wouldn't say I'm so extreme. Um, so there's people that are that I know that are very extreme and they try and play the game under the radar. So they do everything through, for example, like local cryptos, um, just P2P everything. Hmm. Um, they don't touch banks, they don't touch any centralized institutions. And so for me, I can see where that is advantageous, but it also causes a lot of problems when you want to interact with the physical world here. Like if you're trying to you know, also get funds or, um, you know, interact with, you know, for example, like financial tools. So if we're trying to solve the problem of the, by the way, anyone in the audience have an Ethereum ticket through Mintbase? Anyone who's not got a swag bag? Yes, I see someone there. So can you come up for a moment? The person who just put their hand up? Yes, thanks. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, you know, you know that we've not given you a swag bag. Right. So one way we could solve this problem is by airdropping a token that redeems for the swag bag in your wallet. Excellent. Okay. So that's how we solve that problem. What do you think about that, Chris? Thank you. I mean, like, like I said, I, I think uh, I'm not, you know, for or against. Uh, fully decentralization. Like I said, I think there's pros and cons to each extreme, but I think to kind of get the both, the both of best worlds and also that familiarity of the, of the onboarding process, uh, there, it kind of has to be in like the bottom third of one of those things where it touches that gray line of being decentralized, but it, you know, you can also have some sort of, you know, I guess like, uh, like uh, something, uh, some identifier. Mm. David? So the art space is obviously complex and quite interesting. So being an anonymous artist has its pros and cons. However, we started in that space of all we needed was an Ethereum address and an alias for an artist name. Um, but we found that just those two pieces of information, you couldn't do the basics of what it takes to be a marketplace, like inform the artist that someone had placed a bid or tell the artist that someone had bought something. So we introduced a notifications feature and allowed artists to choose to give us a little bit more data, a little bit more information, like an email address. Mm. We started to build more of a profile around who these artists were. And on the flip side, you've got collectors that are buying NFT artworks and part of the reason they're buying that artwork is because there's a narrative around the artist. And if they, all they get is an alpha numerical address, they can't buy into the narrative of who the artist is and why they're collecting, why they're producing the work. So being anonymous and trying to create a brand for yourself as an artist is a real tricky problem. So David Pakman said earlier that one of the issues that we have in this space, of course, is adoption. And he then unpacked that. And he talked about how we get to know our users. Um, what's the most successful thing you've done to get to know your users and create engagement? So we do, we do 
So we're an invite-only platform, which means we're in a beta phase, uh, and we have a really kind of small community of around 250 artists. We have a social, obviously social platform, Telegram, and we find that there's a lot of activity in there. Um, and we find that the, all the artists are kind of talking to each other quite a lot. We also push out a few surveys that kind of get like traditional user feedback about how they feel about the application that they're on, the plat like known origin as a platform. We're also finding when we bring new artists into the scene that know nothing about blockchain and know nothing about NFTs, there's like a lot of hand-holding, right? Yeah. We have to talk them through downloading MetaMask or Trust Wallet on mobile or another. We have to sometimes push some ETH to them just so they can make their first transaction and pay for the gas. This, these, on, these barriers for entry, moving someone that's using Instagram to create a brand and sell work, trying to move them over to this decentralized world, there's a lot of steps we have to take the artists through. Um, Sound, uh, sounds like a lot of work. That's our biggest overhead right now. It's but like how, how do you scale? How do you scale that business? You, you need a proper community officer. You need a proper marketing manager. You need a team that's ready to onboard crypto newbies into like these new digital artists we're finding the vr artists kind of get it more for some reason they can see the value in the digital artwork that they create and they can see that it retains a value and people will pay for it and um, before lots of people were just giving this stuff away on instagram and twitter so i'll ask you another question which of your artists creates the most engagement and why do you think? That's tough, man. That's a tough question. That's like saying, who's your favorite child, right? Say again? It's like saying, who's your favorite child? Well, we, we have certain artists. Hey, here's an interesting thing. We have certain artists that have created such engagement with the collectors that if they put um, an edition of 25 on Known Origin, we have an artist called X Copy. What's the name of the artist? X Copy. Exopy, and that and that uh, that artist has engagement. Yeah, he he Why? sold he sold twenty five artworks in less than 35, 37 minutes. Why? Because he's built his style is brilliant. He's built a brand around himself. Was it porn? Was it what? <laughs> was it was it out there porn? No, it? no, it's just he's just. I'm just trying to wake you guys up. He's he's just a very good artist that has a style that people like. Okay. right now and we've always said that we'd never kind of police the artwork that gets released we can we can invite people that we believe fit with the community and we want to build a positive community at known origin and um, and the market right now loves his stuff so when he releases a new artwork it sells out within minutes amazing topper um what what's the what's the most engaging thing that you've done so i think one of the most interesting things that we've seen recently <clears throat> is we're partnering with a, um, an NGO that's working with coffee farms, and it's a small, um, they work with small farms, and they train them to boot, boot, go from making normal beans to premium beans. So when they do this, they actually end up doing 10x their income. It's really important for the farmers. And what's cool about this is that the NGO is actually incentivized to pay farmers to take classes. And so the blockchain plays this really interesting part where they actually gamify the education of learning how to make premium beans. Um, and then the, the act of taking that education and the actual resulting beans and the whole supply chain is then tracked through on, on a blockchain. And so when it ends up in a consumer, uh, the consumer can scan a QR code and see the entire history of that all the way back from the individual farmer taking an interesting class participating, producing premium beans, wow. and then the whole supply chain through. And I think that's, it's engagement in multiple levels, and I think it's really interesting. And you've actually done that? We are working with them now. They actually, the blockchain parts we're implementing, the, um, the, they actually do work with farmers now um, with like WhatsApp profiles. That sounds like yeah. a great project. Have you written a blog post about it? Not yet. I, I would love to <laughs> co-author a blog post with you about that. Awesome. That's amazing. Chris, how about you? What, in your experience, what's, what's been the most engaging activity that you've done in, in this space? So, so I think uh, the most engaging thing in this space has really been, uh, or successful thing has really been community. Everything kind of 
goes back down to the people that are in and around the project or the people that are interacting with it as well. Uh, for a project like us with the Zero Collateral, uh, it was something that was launched very, very recently. And what we've done in order to iterate very quickly is to get feedback from anybody and everybody that's pretty much been, that we've been speaking to, that have been involved with, uh, with the project, that have also have used the product. And with that, it's, it's more about not being so married to the concept, but being open to different types of feedback. And that kind of goes back to what David's saying, where when you took a take a look at what David's saying in terms of like how popular an artist is, it also gets down to the community. It's the community of that per specific artist. And yeah. that's why he has that brand. That's why he's so successful. That's why he's been able to sell all that artwork in 37 minutes. Um, so that's what we've been trying to do, is trying to build a really good, strong community Albeit ours is a little bit more based on the DeFi side, um, but it, but again the uh, foundation of you know good engagement kind of comes down to that is who's interested in your in your project, who's who you interacting with, and who can you get uh, gauge feedback off of. Okay, that's really interesting. And um, who who remembers what um, uh, Marguerite was saying on the gaming panel, Neon District? Um, I, I had a conversation with Marguerite, and I remember that she actually did an airdrop of cold tokens into people's wallets about this time last year. Have you guys had any experience dropping cold, to cold in other words, not invited tokens into people's wallets? And do you think those sort of airdrops work? So we um, actually can't do that on Tupelo, so we don't have a ton of experience with that. Um, but I do think actually watching Handshake grow it was really interesting, kind of cold air. Watching what? Handshake grow for the, I mean, that's not an NFT, but yeah. it's like watching how they've... And they're doing cold airdrops? They've been doing cold airdrops uh, based on a community, right? So they've been incentivizing right. GitHub, um, GitHub users and other uh, players in the space. So let me ask you guys, if we come to you next week with um, a, a new token uh, from a sponsor who wants to give you something and we just dropped it into your wallet, would you go, oh no, Jody, I don't want that, that's spam? Or would you go, okay, I'm interested in this space, I came to the event and so I'm open to seeing new things about NFTs? Who, who thinks, who, who's going to abuse me if we do that? No abuse. Oh, maybe some at the back. One guy here. No, he was joking. Um, who thinks it would be okay if we had an offer that we thought was um, of value to you and created value in the NFT space? Can we just send it to your wallet next week? Yes? Okay. That's nice. That's a lot more. If there's context around it, I think that's right. There you go, Cameron. <laughs> um, Chris, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to say also, like, uh, cold airdrop if it's somewhat targeted, like we're, you're just discussing now, for people that were attending this event and you sent them an airdrop, it's probably more relevant than if you just uh, sent a random wallet and NFT or some sort of token and they had no idea what it's about. So again, like the whole initial kind of premise of this panel was more about uh, engagement and also creating value off yes. of like an NFT. Yes. So again, people that are here and you're airdropping them, I guess, quote unquote, cold air dropping them a token, there's some sort of engagement and relativity to it than, you know, a, a thousand random Ethereum addresses that you're just dropping tokens to and you have no idea, you know, anything. I think with the uh, airdrop stuff, there's, there's, I can't remember the name of the, the project, but there's definitely a team working on the idea that you can wrap a message around the airdrop so you can give some context to it. Yeah. I agree with this guy here. I think it's context of like you're saying if I've been at an event and then two days later I receive something yeah. that's got the, the name you and the brand okay. and it's got some context around it that yeah. kind of makes sense I have stuff in my wallet that's been airdropped that just makes zero sense to me Yeah, and no, I, I, I literally don't know what to do with it I'm like stuck with these things in my trust wallet and it's like what do you do with them so what we've done actually is partnered with uh, Satoshi's Treasure which some of you might have heard which is a hunt yeah. for a million dollars worth of Bitcoin and uh, that's a really interesting way of doing airdrops, actually. It's, it's phrased as a game. But what it's really about is actually distributing a token to an engaged audience. Yeah, that's cool. So like, we did a side hunt with them where there was like a text-based adventure that people would play, all of it NFT-based. And what that does is the people that are going to end up with the tuples, our future token, 
now what they've proved is that they are really engaged in, with our platform. Any one quick question? We're almost out of time. Yes. I hear all the conversations around adoption and engagement. Oh, so my name is Stephanie. I work with Topper actually at Tupelo. Hi. Um, I hear a lot of people talking about adoption and engagement, um, and almost no one in this space talks about either of those things relative to retention. Um, because, so, so I'm curious, uh, especially uh, for some of the panels that work with, with, or some of the services that work with artists, let's say, like, what role, or do you guys see engagement as entirely different when you're talking about retention? Because there is that like concept of like getting someone new to adopt a thing and keeping someone happy and using and et cetera. So like, do you have a distinction within your organization about how you approach those? So it's, it's tough to, I hear what you're saying. It's our churn rate on artists is really low. Um, we've also recently done a scrape of the site to kind of see which artists have we onboarded that have simply never tokenized a piece and how do we engage with them to nudge them to say, look, here's your profile page. You can, you can start monetizing your craft. All you've got to do is kind of upload your first piece. Um, when it comes to collectors, there seems to be like a core set of collectors that go around kind of the, the kind of the different platforms like Super Air, Maker's Place, Known Origin, and they kind of scoop up the, the really hot uh, artist's work. Um, and he's trying to find out, had a great conversation upstairs. We had like, we can onboard more artists, but then we need more buyers because we'll just saturate the market with lots of NFTs. And there's only a small pool of collectors right now. And I think that's where we need to kind of shift our focus and figure out how do we encourage people to buy these beautiful things that these artists are creating? Um, and that's something we're trying to work on, but we've not figured it out yet. But it's still so early in this space. And you could probably count the amount of like top, top collectors on two hands. Um, but we found that we are seeing new addresses appear in our kind of, the people that are buying the, the artwork. And we, we've, got a, we've got a quite, we're like affordable art, right? You don't have to spend thousands of dollars on an art piece to own a known origin art, artwork. <clears throat> um, so it kind of helps, it help, that helps engagement, I guess. I have a very quick question from, last question from the audience, David, for you. Uh, is Chris Bell 18 here? Chris Bell, can stand up and say hi. Um, so Chris has said, is there room for 2D art and 3D art, or is 2D a waste of time? Do you, do you mean physical or digital, or do you mean 2D digital, like flat graphics? VR's the future, man. I'm get, yeah, exactly. So I was wondering, um, if you create 2D art right now and you have a virtual piece of land, you can maybe put a poster on your wall and you can just stare at the front of it just like you would in your house. But if you actually create a 3D piece of art and you can put it kind of like a sculpture and you can walk around it, is that being created as well? Here's my thing. I think with JPEGs and GIFs are like, that isn't the future of this space. The future is a virtual gallery where I can go and interact with an art medium, whether it's a sculpture or an interactive art piece that's done in touch design that I can walk towards and it changes, it moves, but we're not gonna get there yet. I'm, I'm blown away with the pace that Sonom and Space are moving. Because I did a talk a few, maybe two, a year and a half ago about a five-year vision and VR was part of that vision and you guys are like moving there really quickly so virtual artworks in virtual galleries kind of makes more sense to most people um, and then you can have the virtual sculptures that people can move around and, and kind of interact with I think that's where we're going we're just not there yet thank you very much David thank you for that question Chris I'm just gonna finish with one question for the audience which is back to our discussion about identity, anonymous or verified. Um, it's sort of weird to ask, but I'm gonna ask it like this. Could all the people who wanna be anonymous online put up their hands? You've de-anonymized yourself. Wow, that's interesting. That's more than I thought, including James. You wanna be anonymous, okay. And, and let me ask the other question, which is those who wanna be verified, 
who, you, you want others to know who you are. Okay, so there are more of you. Anyway, this has been a great panel. Thank you very much. Um, Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay.